development of aortic arches the first arteries which develop in our body is the primitive aorta there are two primitive aorta right and left and these two primitive aorta are continuous with the primitive heart tube this primitive aorta is divided by a primitive foregut into dorsal aorta ventral aorta and connecting the uh, part is called as first aortic arch artery so there uh, are two primitive aorta which are continuous which are continuous with the primitive heart tube and this primitive aorta uh, is divided by primitive foregut into the part which is behind the primitive uh, foregut is called as dorsal aorta which is in front of the foregut is called as ventral aorta and the part connecting uh, these two is called as first aortic arch artery now these here you can see the dorsal aorta first aortic arch and the ventral aorta now what happens these primitive uh, two primitive heart tubes and the ventral aorta they fuse with each other so the two primitive uh, two ventral sac they fuse to form the aortic sac two ventral aorta they fuse and form the aortic sac and the unfused part of the ventral aorta called as right and left horn of the aortic sac and two primitive heart tube fuse to form a single heart tube and its cranial part is called as truncus arteriosus a spiral septum develops in the truncus arteriosus which divide the truncus into ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk so ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk are continuous it is they are continuous with the aortic sac now initially there is first aortic arch artery which is connecting the this orange one is the dorsal aorta and here is ventral aorta which has been fused and forming the aortic sac but gradually six aortic arch arteries develop they develop in fourth week and uh, they are named cranio caudally 1 2 6 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 there are six pair of the aortic arch arteries most of the part of first and second aortic arch artery will get degenerated and the fifth aortic arch artery will disappear fully and in the caudal part these two dorsal aorta they fuse and they form a single aortic single aorta or the median dorsal aorta now what is the fate of pharyngeal arch arteries first pair of pharyngeal arch artery most of its part will disappear and remaining part will form the maxillary artery this will supply the teeth muscles of the eye and face so first pharyngeal arch artery is forming the maxillary artery second pair of the pharyngeal arch it also gets de- uh, disappears most of its part but the remaining part will form the hyoid artery and stapedial artery now coming to the third pharyngeal arch artery here you can see this is the third pharyngeal arch artery and it is opening into the this is the dorsal aorta cranial part of the dorsal aorta and this is the caudal part of the dorsal aorta so from the third pharyngeal arch artery buds are arising here you can see the bud it is arising from the third pharyngeal arch artery and this bud will form the external carotid artery so part of the third arch artery which is proximal to it will form the common carotid artery and part of the third pharyngeal arch artery which is caudal to it this will form uh, a part of internal carotid artery with the dorsal cranial part of the this is the cranial part of the dorsal aorta with distal part part which is distal to the th- uh, bud this part of the third pharyngeal arch artery both together will form the internal carotid artery so bud is arising from the third pharyngeal arch artery this bud will form the external carotid artery part proximal to it will form the common carotid artery and part distal to it with the cranial part of the dorsal aorta both together will form the internal carotid artery now one more thing that is the the third arch artery this one is the third arch artery and this is the fourth arch artery on the right side they are arising from right horn of the aortic sac so they are arising from a common trunk that is right horn of the aortic sac and this right horn of the aortic sac give rise to brachiocephalic trunk so the brachius that's why uh, the third and fourth arch arteries or uh, which give rise to later on the third arch artery will form the common carotid and the fourth arch artery will form the 
so right subclavian so this is the reason that uh, common right common carotid and right subclavian artery they are arising from a common trunk that is known as brachiocephalic artery because third and pharyngeal arch arteries are arising from right horn of the aortic sac and which is later on will forming the will form the brachiocephalic trunk now these third and fourth arteries arch arteries they are opening into the ventral part of the aortic sac here you can see third and fourth pharyngeal arch arteries they are, they will open into the ventral part of the aortic sac and this is the sixth pharyngeal arch artery it is opening into the dorsal part of the aortic sac and uh, the spiral septum which is dividing the aortic sac it divides the aortic sac in such a way that the blood from ascending aorta will pass from the uh, pass into the third and pharyngeal third and fourth pharyngeal arch artery and blood from the pulmonary trunk it will pass into the sixth arch artery okay now one more thing that uh, this is the dorsal aorta left dorsal aorta this is right dorsal aorta they are fused they will fused in the caudal part and this is the part of the dorsal aorta between third arch artery and this is the fourth arch artery so part of the dorsal aorta between third and fourth pharyngeal arch artery is called as ductus carotidus or the carotid duct and this part will be de degenerated later now the fate of fourth and sixth pair of the aortic arch is differ on right and left side on the right side this fourth pharyngeal arch artery with here the seventh cervical segmental artery of the right side so right seventh cervical intersegmental artery and the right fourth arch artery both together will form the right subclavian artery but on the left side the seventh cervical intersegmental artery alone will form the left subclavian artery so the origin of right subclavian is by the fourth arch artery right fourth arch artery with the seventh cervical intersegmental artery and on the left side it is arising from seventh cervical intersegmental artery and uh, here you can see this is the sixth arch artery that is uh, and here the artery to the lung bud is arising and the part proximal to it on both side this part will form the right right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery and part distal to it on the right side will be degenerated or it will disappear on the right side here and on the left side it will be persisting and it will form the ductus arteriosus so on the uh, right side six pharyngeal arch artery distal to origin of the lung bud artery then this part will form the ductus arteriosus but on the left the right side it will degenerate here you can see the origin of right subclavian by fourth arch artery with the seventh cervical intersegmental and on the left side by say, uh, seventh cervical intersegmental artery only and here the fourth uh, arch artery uh, sorry fourth uh, here the aort uh, aortic sac with the right horn of the aortic sac and fourth arch artery all three together will form the arch of aorta here you can see the arch of aorta is arising from aortic sac left horn of the aortic sac and left fourth arch artery all three together will form the arch of aorta and and the left dorsal aorta with the fused dorsal aorta both will form the descending thoracic aorta and on the right side this dorsal aorta will be degenerated on the right side just caudal to the seventh cervical intersegmental artery now fourth and sixth uh, arch arteries has been done now fifth pair of the pharyngeal arch artery will uh, be degenerated completely so it will form no vascular derivative now coming to the six again that uh, this is the diagram showing the six arch artery bluish one and uh, these are the arteries to the lung bud and part proximal to this lung bud artery on both side it will form the right and left pulmonary artery and commonly the pulmonary trunk 
they they are opening in the pulmonary trunk and uh, on the right side this part distal to it will be degenerated and on the left side it is forming the ductus arteriosus so what are the changes occurring in the aortic sac first second arch most of its part will uh, gets degenerated first remaining part of the first arch artery will form the maxillary artery and the second arch artery will form the hyoid and stapedial artery fifth arch artery fifth arch artery will complete uh, degenerated completely and the distal part of the right arch artery also gets degenerated but on the left side it is forming the ductus arteriosus the part of the dorsal aorta which is between third and fourth pharyngeal arch artery it's from the it forms the ductus carotidus which also degenerates and the seventh cervical intersegmental artery on the left side will form the left subclavian artery and on the right side with the right aortic arch artery it will form the right subclavian artery and part distal to this right dorsal aorta will gets degenerated here we uh, now applied anatomy that the course of right and left recurrent laryngeal nerve is different why it is different on the right side this recurrent laryngeal nerve is forming a hook around right subclavian artery but on the left side it is forming a hook or it is hooking around the ligamentum arteriosum why this is so because we know that on the on both side six arch arteries are present initially but later the six arch artery the distal part of the six arch artery gets degenerated on the right side here you can see so this nerve has to loop around the right subclavian artery which is developing from the fourth arch artery but on the left side the derivative of the six arch artery is present that is ductus arteriosus or the ligamentum arteriosum will, will be formed later on that's why this uh, art uh, this nerve will be forming a loop around this ligamentum arteriosum or the ductus arteriosum and this recurrent laryngeal nerve which is a branch of vagus nerve is the nerve of six arch that's why it is forming a loop around six arch artery but due to disappearance of the six arch artery in the distal part it will form a loop around the right subclavian artery on the right side because fourth uh, the distal part of the six arch artery has been disappeared but it is present on the left side that's why it will form a loop around the uh, six arch artery that is the ductus arteriosum which is arising from the distal part of the six arch artery that's why the course of recurrent laryngeal nerve is different on both side now ductus arteriosus is a connecting channel which is connecting the left pulmonary artery with the arch of aorta and as the baby is born and uh, lungs inflate lung inflates then uh, there is release of bradykinin which is a chemical substance and a smooth muscle constrictor because and it lead to constriction of the muscles of the ductus arteriosus and leads to functional closure of the ductus arteriosus at birth but anatomical closure it occurs after 1 to 3 months of birth because of proliferation of the tunica intima and uh, it is seen that uh, intra if there is intrauterine asphyxia or uh, prostaglandin e is present then it will lead to patent uh, patency of the ductus arteriosus that's why prostaglandin inhibitors that is uh, endomethacin is given to promote the closure of the ductus arteriosus but that de uh, despite given uh, giving the endomethacin if it persists then surgical treatment ligation or resection is done because if the ductus arteriosus is present then uh, the flow of blood will occur after birth from arch of aorta to the pulmonary trunk because pressure in the arch of aorta is more as compared to pulmonary trunk that's why flow of blood or the from the aorta into the pulmonary trunk and it lead to decrease output and that's why baby will feel uncomfortable or it will feel dyspnea due to decreased cardiac output and uh, the pregnant females having rubella 
and uh, if they give rise to female ba- baby premature female baby their chances of the ductus art- preterm ductus arteriosus are more now coming to the coarctation of the aorta narrowing of the aorta is called as coarctation and uh, and most of the cases it is distal to the origin of left subclavian artery here you can see this is the left subclavian and it is almost always distal to the this narrowing is distal to the origin of left subclavian and that's why the blood arter- arteries which are arising from the aorta arch of aorta that is common carotid uh, right and left common carotid and uh, the left right subclavian and the left subclavian so blood supply they are supplying the head and neck and upper limb upper limb so blood supply to the upper limb and head and neck is sufficient or more as compared to the lower limb because here is the narrowing that's why the cardiac output ya yeah, or the blood supply to the lower limb is less so there will be less bp in the lower limb femoral pulse will be less and blood supply to the upper limb is more so there will be high bp and chances of the cerebral hemorrhage is also more because of increased blood supply to the head and neck region and why this coarctation of aorta occurs it occurs due to extension of the process of obliteration of the ductus arteriosus in the aorta because we know that ob- here is the ductus arteriosus so, so ductus arteriosus uh, is obliterated by proliferation of the intimal cells uh, proliferation of the cells of the tunica intima and if this process of the proliferation of the tunica uh, cells of the tunica intima also extends into the aorta which is near to it then it will lead to coarctation or the narrowing of aorta and uh, for because there is ca- decreased blood supply to the lower limb then uh, so collateral circulation between proximal and distal part of the aorta starts that's why inter- uh, and this collateral circulation involves the internal thoracic intercostal arteries superior and inferior epigastric arteries and external iliac arteries and it leads to dilatation of the internal inter- intercostal arteries and due to dilatation of the intercostal arteries there will be notching of ribs which is seen in the radiograph here yeah, low bp toward beyond the point of coarctation high bp before the point of coarctation and chances of cerebral hemorrhage is more now abnormal origin of the right subclavian artery normally right subclavian artery arises from the right fourth arch artery with the right seventh cervical intersegmental artery and abnormal cervical intersegmental uh, sorry abnormal right subclavian artery it arises from the right dorsal aorta with the right seventh cervical intersegmental artery normally this right dorsal aorta disappears but it doesn't disappear uh, ring in this condition and after origin it will encircle the esophagus and trachea it is passing behind the trachea and esophagus and the arch of aorta with its arteries they are passing in front of the trachea and esophagus so a, a vascular ring is formed around the trachea and esophagus that's why this uh, vascular ring can compress the trachea and esophagus and this condition is called as dysphagia lysoria compression of esophagus causing difficulty in swallowing and this condition is called as dysphagia lysoria now double aortic arch normal condition in normal condition this right dorsal aorta disappears but if it persists then it will lead to formation of the right aortic arch and this right aortic arch also passes behind the trachea and esophagus and it will form a ring around trachea and esophagus because in front arch of aorta is passing and in between this ring trachea and esophagus can be compressed so that may lead to difficulty in breathing or swallowing so this is all about uh, development of aortic arches and it's applied thank you